Is the practice of praying in tongues that some Christians follow beneficial to their desire to connect to God? Well, before we can really answer that question, we need to look at all of these things that are called the gifts of the Spirit. Mm. Um, because I feel that a lot of Christians believe these gifts, such as prophecy, uh, speaking in tongues and other types of gifts, a lot of people believe they are the gifts of the Holy Spirit and they're not the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So what we need to do is define what is a gift of the Holy Spirit compared to what is a gift of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be able to look at the specific gifts of the Spirit and this okay. one speaking in tongues. So with the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is a conduit like a pipe, an energy of God, that allows God to connect to the human and pass love from God's soul into the human soul. So that is its only purpose. It has no other purpose. It doesn't have a voice. It doesn't have any other purpose. It doesn't control what a person thinks. It's not a gift. It's not a, a thing that gives truth. It's not a thing that uh, provides any other mechanism from God aside from the divine love flowing through it. And the reason why I called it the Holy Spirit was because it's the spirit that enabled the person to become holy. Mm. And it's the only spirit of God, in fact, that I've discovered that allows the, con the, the divine love of God to flow into the human soul. And for that reason, I felt it was the most holy of all of God's spirits. If you, and when I refer to God's spirits, I'm referring to the active forces that come from God, all of the energies, if you like, that come from God. So when we talk about a gift of the spirit, we are not talking about the gift of that the Holy Spirit brings. Right. So speaking in tongues is not a gift of the Holy Spirit. The only gift that the Holy Spirit brings to the human soul is the gift of divine love. Mm. All other gifts come from other things. So that's the first thing we must understand. Mm. The second thing we need to understand is that when the Bible mm. refers to the word spirit, it can be referring to many different things. It can be referring to a spirit person, for example. It can be referring to a type of emotion, a, a different energy or emotion that a person has. It's like you could say the spirit of violence, mm -hmm. the spirit of happiness. You know, these are all emotional feelings that we feel sort of like a spirit. And in fact, the, the way they transmit is that they have an energy and a colour that goes between one soul and another soul. So, so they are actually an actual spiritual uh, an energetic transmission of, of the emotion. So if I'm angry with you, for example, you will feel it inside of yourself because there'll be a transmission of a very red, mm -hmm. reddish, a very bright, reddy, black feeling coming out of me into you. And, and it's actually something that a spirit can see. Mm -hmm. a, a person in the spirit world can see this spirit or energy that comes at, pardon me, out of my soul and into yours. So you could say that's a spirit. Then you could also say that there are things that are things like the spirit that are of the spirit body. So as you are aware now, we have a physical body and the spirit body. And in fact, Paul said that, you know, that we have a physical body as well as a spirit one. Now, you could say that the gifts of the spirit are all related to the spirit body. So the gift of speaking in tongues is related to the spirit body of the person in okay. some way. Does that make sense? Mm, mm. Now, how it's related is through a process. And, and if we look at how the gift is used, that is one part of the question. And then the other part of the question is, what is the gift in itself? Now, the gift of speaking in tongues is the ability to speak in other languages. Mm. Transmitting divine truth, but, but to be more specific, even though the speaker does not know the language. Mm -hmm. So in other words, it gives me the ability to speak in another language without me as the speaker knowing the language. And to clarify, the spirit comes from my own spirit. Well, this is the question, isn't this it? Is the question. Because it's potentially from a spirit in the spirit world. Right. Working through the energy of your own spirit body. 
Oh. transmitting information to your mind and then you have clarity to speak it to mm. somebody else. Does that make sense? Yes. So if we look at how speaking in tongues in the Bible was first used, we can, help ide we can identify what the issues with speaking in tongues is all about. So if you look in Acts chapter 2, verses 5 and 6, and I'm reading from the uh, New International Version here, it says, Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Mm. So this was the first account in the Bible of speaking in tongues. Peter and a number of other people at this point in time, this is after Pentecost, they, they became infused with spirit and they had the ability to speak in tongues. Mm. Now, the Holy Spirit connected to them at Pentecost and because they became into a condition of truth and love. They also had a desire to receive divine love and the Holy Spirit connected with them and divine love flowed into their souls. Uh -huh. Now, the divine love in their souls caused a change in their soul, mm. which then impacted upon their spirit body which meant their spirit body could now do things mm. that it couldn't do before. Mm -hmm. So Peter could never speak in tongues mm. before. And many of the others who were listed here could never speak in tongues before. This is the first occasion where they could speak in tongues. I just need to have a cough. So the purpose of speaking in tongues was not to just provide a heap of gibberish to people who could not understand. It was to provide divine truth to the people who could hear it in their own mm -hmm. language. Yes. That was its purpose. Yes. It had a direct loving purpose. Now, this is the case with each gift. Each gift that we have, whether it's prophecy or speaking in tongues or other gifts like that, they can be used in a loving purpose mm. or an unloving purpose. Mm. And it just depends on which way our soul decision mm -hmm. takes us, our desire, desire takes us as to whether we will have a loving purpose or an unloving purpose in the dissemination of the gift. Now, in this case, in the, the first occasion of speaking in tongues, it was obviously a loving purpose. Almost 3,000 people from all different walks of life in different countries, they were all Jews, mm -hmm. but they all come from different countries for the, for the Passover celebration. They all spoke different languages yeah. and they heard Peter speaking in their own language. Mm. Mm. That was the power. They were hearing the divine truth being spoken in their own language. Yep. And that's yeah. what caused a huge attraction, of course, to the truth and caused them to listen. And many of them, as a result, as it says, decided to follow it as a result of them, of, of them hearing the truth in their own language. Now, that's a case of a gift of the spirit body yeah. being used yes. in a positive direction. Yes. Now, Peter didn't know the language, mm. so the language had to come from somewhere. Mm. And where it came from was from spirits in the spirit world who could speak the languages of these people, but who also knew divine truth. Mm. So these spirits in the spirit world who could speak divine truth could now connect to Peter because he had received the Holy Spirit and received the divine love through the Holy Spirit. His soul was transformed to the point where he could now hear other spirits mm. yeah. and he could now s transmit information from mm. other spirits to people. And as a result, they started talking to him and, and they started using his body to transmit the information in another language, even though Peter himself did not know the language because mm. he, he could only speak Hebrew and Aramaic. Yes. So uh, that was the process of speaking in tongues. Now, it can also be used in a, in, a, in a terrible way, in a very unloving way. So if we look at Paul's words now, if we look at Corinthians, 1 first, uh, first Corinthians 14, Paul spoke about the unloving ways in which you can use speaking in tongues. He says, follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. Mm. Now, the gift of prophecy is different to the gift of tongues in the sense that the gift of prophecy is still a spirit speaking to the person. It's not the Holy Spirit. Mm. Mm. See, most Christians believe it's the Holy Spirit. Mm. Yeah. But it is not because the Holy Spirit doesn't speak. And the Holy Spirit doesn't give prophecy. 
All the purpose of the Holy Spirit is, is to be a conduit for divine love to flow into the soul. That's its purpose. That's its only purpose. It does not have a voice. It is not an entity. And it does not give anything else to the soul. This, when he talks about the gift of prophecy, the gift of prophecy is the same gift of prophecy that Isaiah, Jeremiah, all of yes. these, Daniel, all of these ones had, which is the gift of being able to hear what a spirit says and say it in your own language to a per group of people who are hearing yep. and therefore upbuild the people who are hearing and yourself. So it's spirits, and they can be dark spirits or they could be bright spirits, mm. transmitting information through a person and that person then transmits the information to a group of people who listen to it. That's the gift of prophecy. And Paul said he desires that people prophesy instead of speak in tongues. And the reason why is because speaking in tongues is often not in the language of the people who are listening. Mm. And uh, whereas prophesying was always in the language of the people that were hearing. And therefore it could be beneficial. Mm. He says, for anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God. And I would even dispute that particular claim. Indeed, no one understands him. He utters mysteries with his spirit. Mm. Now, if you think about it, if God is a God of love and God is trying to give us truth, would God try to create mystery? Mm. Obviously not. If mystery is being created, then it is not coming from God, nor is it coming from the Holy Spirit. It is coming from a spirit in the spirit world, yeah. a person who is transmitting the information. And Paul's saying, often these people were speaking in tongues, right? And basically all they were doing was showing off. Yeah. They, it was having no effect on the yeah. hearer because the hearer could not understand. And it was having very little effect even on the person because they could not even understand what they were saying. Mm. They just had this feeling with the spirit and said a whole heap of things mm. as a mm -hmm. result. He said, but everyone who prophesies speaks to men for their strengthening, encouragement and comfort. Yes. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies mm. the church. Mm. Mm. I would like every one of you to speak in tongues, but I would rather have you prophesy. Mm. He who prophesies is greater than he who speaks in tongues unless he interprets mm -hmm. so that the church may be edified. Yep. So what he's basically saying here is a basic understanding of the rules of mediumship or channeling. And I know most Christians don't like those terms very much <laughs> because of the different prohibitions of such in the Old Testament version, in the Old Testament parts of the Bible. But if they think about it carefully, I spoke to spirits when I was on earth in the first century. There is records of me speaking to evil spirits mm -hmm. and speaking to good spirits. In the transfiguration, I spoke mm -hmm. to good spirits. Right. In, uh, with regard to expelling demons, I spoke to evil spirits. Mm -hmm. Now, if I spoke to spirits, there should be no prohibition of you speaking to one. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, that's what most of the people understood. The most, all the Christians understood this. So the Christians understood that they could speak to spirits. Uh, because it was something that I showed them that mm. they could do. And so what they did was they uh, often encouraged the speaking to spirits, but unfortunately they often didn't know what kind of spirit mm. they were speaking to. And this is why one of the other apostles said, you've got to try the spirits okay. to see which one you're speaking to. So yes. in other words, you've got to get to know them a bit and understand where they're coming from and understand their background and understand you know, their feelings mm. before you actually know whether they're speaking the truth mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. Now, many people who speak in tongues are just open conduits for spirits who all they want to do is speak in their own tongue to somebody on earth. It has no benefit to any of their audience. Mm. It has no benefit to themselves. In fact, often it can be degra degrading to themselves because the spirit might not be in a good condition. Mm. Now, the problem with that kind of speaking in tongues is it doesn't help any listener, it doesn't help the person who's doing it, and it doesn't help the spirit because the spirit and the person who's doing it are just in their own addictions with each other, trying to get glory mm. that has no purpose. Mm. Mm. What Paul was saying is the speaking in tongues or, yeah. or if you, and prophesying that is beneficial yes. is the speaking in tongues and prophesying that people can understand. Mm. You have to be able to understand it before it's going to benefit you. And he was saying that there is no problem having these gifts of the Spirit or these gifts of speaking in tongues or prophesying 
which are all about mediumship abilities, mm -hmm. channeling spirits. They, they are all possible and many people in Pentecostal religious churches mm -hmm. engage them. There's nothing wrong with engaging them with the exception of when they're engaged out of harmony with love. Yes. If they're engaged out of harmony with love, they will damage everybody, including the person doing it. Mm. If they're engaged in harmony with love, then they can benefit everybody, including the person doing mm. it. And that should be the underlying principle of speaking in tongues. So the real question in terms of what a Christian should focus on, a Christian should focus, uh, is what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13. Because mm. this is what he said there. He said, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but I do not have love, mm. I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal, right? So what's he saying there? He's saying, if I have these gifts of the spirit, which by the way, anyone can have, we don't need to have any special development of love to have them. And that's what Paul's implying. You can actually have the gift without having any love at all in you. And if you have the gift without having any love in you, it's like you might as well just be banging something, mm, you know, making, playing, a, lot of making a lot of racket mm, mm. And, because it has no benefit whatsoever sure. on the rest of the world. So what Paul focused on in 1 Corinthians 13 was he was focused on you must develop in love if you're truly going to have any spiritual development. So in answer to your question about developing speaking in tongues in order to connect to God or connect to the Holy Spirit, my suggestion is this. Speaking in tongues does not connect you with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm because it is not the Holy Spirit that you're connecting to mm -hmm. when you speak in tongues. It is a spirit mm -hmm. and your own spirit body. In addition to that, speaking in tongues does not automatically mean you are more loving. Mm -hmm. And as Paul correctly said, developing in love should be the focus of the Christian, not developing other things. Yeah. Now, as a subsequent development of love, you may be able to speak in tongues, and you may be able to prophesy. Mm. But it will, if you focus on developing those gifts without developing love, you may as well be a, sound, mm. a clashing symbol, as Paul said. It is pointless to do such a thing. Mm. So, so my feeling in terms of answering this question for you is I feel Christians need to focus more on developing their gift of love, their love of God, their love of their neighbour, all of those things that they must focus on developing. And, and we might talk about that more in, in yeah. terms of daily practice in another question. Yeah. But, but if they focus on developing the so-called gifts of the spirit without developing love, it is completely pointless to their own soul mm -hmm. and completely pointless to the souls of the people who are listening. Mm -hmm. So these Pentecostal churches where people flail around on the ground speaking gibberish that nobody else can translate or understand, it is totally pointless. Not only pointless, it is very selfish because it is imposing gibberish mm -hmm. upon a congregation that deserves better than gibberish. It deserves to have a more, you know, yeah. information about yeah. connection with God, not just gibberish coming from a spirit and a person on earth who's yeah, yeah, yeah. influenced by a spirit who's, who's not in a condition of love. Mm. So what I recommended to people in the first century is the same thing I recommend now, and that is if you, if you make sure that your development in love is your primary focus, these other gifts will come to you, mm. but you'll also know how to use them lovingly. Yes. yes. If you focus on developing the gifts, as many New Age people do and some Christians do, focus on developing the gifts without developing in love, then you will be able to use the gift, but you won't ever be loving. Mm -hmm. And there's no point to that. There's no point. Because the light and brightness of your soul is completely dependent on the love. Mm -hmm. It's not dependent on the gifts. I've seen very, very dark souls having the gift of tongues mm -hmm. and very dark souls having the gift of prophesying mm -hmm. but having no love inside of themselves. And when they pass into the spirit world, they often pass with no love inside of themselves and so therefore they pass into a hellish condition mm. and they have a very harsh surrounding environment as a result. They believed themselves to be developed because they were speaking in tongues. Yes. They believed they were developed because they were prophesying yeah. but true development only comes from development in love mm. Mm. 
and I feel that's the main principle that we need to explain, understand Excellent. with all of the development that we can make in the gifts of the spirit. Mm, mm. Mm. And that would be for other people, people who see, I don't know, energies or see auras, etc. Exactly the same principle mm. applies. Just because you can see an aura or an energy, it does not mean that you are developed in love. In fact, yeah. I've seen many people who can see auras and energies who are very dark and mm. not developed in love at all. Mm. So, so again, the same thing applies. Developing in love yeah. is the only real yeah. spiritual development that a person can make. Now, yeah. there's two types of love. One type is the love that you express from within yourself to another, which I call the natural love that exists within the human soul. And then there's this other type of love that we have the capacity to receive through the Holy Spirit, which is the divine love of God that mm. can enter our soul and transform us. My suggestion to people is to choose the second mm. way of development. Mm. Uh, but both ways of development will grow your soul. Mm -hmm. But the second way of development through connecting through the Holy Spirit with God's love, that will grow the soul infinitely. Yeah. Whereas there will be a limitation of yeah. your growth if you connect in natural love. Mm, mm. And I implied that in many of my um, illustrations in the first century as well, that there were two different types of w ways you could develop your love. Right. But um, I just feel that we need to be careful that we don't get hung up on all of these like fancy things that all seem exciting at the time and forget the excitement of developing in love, mm, which mm. is the real thing that's exciting. You imagine, mm. well, you think about the earth that we have now. If all of us on the earth developed in love, yeah. it wouldn't matter what gifts or no, lack of gifts any of us had, <laughs> we'd all treat each other more loving. You, you imagine how the world would be then yeah. in comparison to how it is now. But if, you, if we can all speak in tongues but don't have any love, how does that change the world? We'd all be speaking gibberish half the time <laughs> and, uh, and dark spirits would be saying their things through us and all that kind of, which oh, often dear, does happen, and, uh, and all be very negative because there's no love involved. Mm -hmm. So that's the damaging part of it sure. all. I also feel that for Christians in particular, we need to not, con um, not confuse the gifts of the spirit with the Holy Spirit. Mm. We need to be very, very careful that we do not confuse that's these two That's a wonderful things. distinction. Yeah. I had never realised that before. Yeah, because it, it's that confusion that causes people then to misrepresent the Holy Spirit yes. and what it does. You see, yes. they start then viewing the Holy Spirit as a person because yes. they can hear a voice. Yes, yes. Not realising they're hearing a voice, so it's not the Holy Spirit. Mm. It's a spirit talking to them, claiming to be the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm. And that's not good. No way. If you think about it, mm. it's not good for a spirit to be claiming to be a Holy Spirit of God when it's not the Holy Spirit of God, it's just a spirit who's lived in the past on earth. Yeah. That, that, that's a false claim. Oh. And, a, and a spirit who claims that, who's speaking us, to us in a voice, is lying to us. And we'd be able to know straight away, if we know that the Holy Spirit is not a voice, it is not going to be able to speak to us, it is an energy of God that transmits love to us, and we know that's the role of the Holy Spirit, then we will, of course, be very mistrustful of any spirit coming along saying, I'm the Holy Spirit, listen to me. Mm -hmm. I see many Christians saying they are talking to the Holy Spirit when they're just talking to a first sphere, quite dark Christian spirit who's claiming to be the Holy Spirit in order to transmit a whole heap of information that is false to the person. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very damaging to the person and it's also quite damaging to the spirit. Mm -hmm. So my, my suggestion is that you need to have a very clear idea what the Holy Spirit is. And once you have that clear idea, you will realise that these gifts of the Spirit are completely separate to the Holy Spirit. And then you'll be much more careful in the way you use these gifts of the Spirit. Mm. And you won't make presumptions or assumptions that you're currently making about these gifts. You won't assume that just because you're hearing a voice that's talking about some kind of form of Christianity, that it's coming from God. You won't be making that assumption anymore because you know that it could be just a spirit claiming to be God or a spirit claiming to be the Holy Spirit mm. talking to you. Mm. And many, many spirits do this just in order to, to mislead people on earth. Mm. And many Christians are being misled by very dark spirits as a result of that. And this is why sometimes you hear some Christian people on earth saying, I was told to go and kill that person. The Holy Spirit told me. Mm. 
well, certainly not the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. that told you to do that. Mm -hmm. It was a spirit who was very dark, mm -hmm. who you've believed your whole life is the Holy Spirit, but it's not. Mm -hmm. And it has a voice that you can hear and you're just acting upon that voice. That's very, very damaging. There have been people historically that have done things according to the Holy Spirit or what the Holy Spirit has told them, which have been completely out of line with love which is an indication that it wasn't the Holy Spirit <laughs> <laughs> that they were connecting to. Yeah, yeah. So it's very important to understand that distinction. Mm. Wonderful. Mm. That's wonderful. With regard to the Holy Spirit, though, when we connect to the Holy Spirit and divine love flows into the soul, the soul grows in its capacity in its gifts of the Spirit. So it is important for us to understand that Connecting to the Holy Spirit and, connect, and receiving divine love does in, increase our capacity to speak in tongues. Mm. It increases our capacity to prophesy. It increases our capacity to see spirits. So in the first century, I could easily see spirits and talk to them because, I, because it, the, the, the love, the divine love that had, was in my soul had changed my soul capacities to the point where I could see the people that mm. I was speaking with mm. Mm. and hear them while I'm speaking to them mm. and talk to them about the truth, about what they were doing. And this is the beauty of doing, connecting with God's love first. And that's why in the first century I said, seek first God's love and yes. all these other things will be added to yes. you. Yes. And that's what I suggest that Christians generally but also every person on this planet mm. decides to do. Mm. Seek first God's love and all these other fascinating things mm. that we can enjoy and have fun with mm. will all come to us in time. Mm. Mm. Wonderful, yeah, wonderful. <laughs>